Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to give you an overview of how I got this now working in the editor. I, I gave you an overview of how the app works in the actual Oculus device. And I also recently released this as an open source project via Patreon. So if you want to check it out, make sure that you check it out in Patreon. And then it's going to be available to everyone else in GitHub next week when I'm going to be making it public. So. What I want to show you is how I can now run it in the editor, what what options I actually added to make it work. So I'm just going to hit play and you can see what it's going to, how it's going to work now. So right now what's happening is I had issues in the previous video where it didn't matter if I move the controller. For some reason, I think Oculus added the, they're, they're keeping the position of the left hand anchor and the right hand anchor. And you can really do anything with it. And I and that's how I had it working before. I was able to move, which allowed me to basically override and grab the position and then use the position to draw a line. So when the, what I ended up doing in this video is I have a few options. So now if I go to the VR draw right, I have an option called allow editor controls. And what that's gonna allow me to do, it's gonna allow me to press different keys and then those keys are gonna allow me to basically draw. And, and that's what I wanna show you. So. If we go into the code, I can show you the, some of the keys that I that I added and also some of the components that were added for this video. So if we look at the if we look at the option that I added, which is called editor and allow editor controls, this is the option that now allows me to determine whether I'm going to be using a different object where I'm tracking the movement. And you can you can kind of see on the awake method, and I put here a note that says if we allow the editor controls use the editor object to track the movement because let me make sure that I that I fix this typo here because oculus blocks the movement of the left controller anchor and the right controller anchor so so what I ended up doing is that, okay well if they're blocking that what I'm going to use is I'm going to use an object that is inside of some of the components which is an actual oculus controller and if I move the oculus controller it's going to move and I'm going to track that object so that's what I'm going to be doing if this is set to true, I'm going to override the object to track movement, which is what I was using to basically to track movement. And that's going to work if, if I'm not running in the editor. But if I'm running in the editor, I'm going to override that and I'm going to use the object that gets put into this other game object, which I also have right here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move, let me go ahead and move them close to each other so that you guys, when you're testing this out, you guys know, you got, you guys know that they are related. So if we look at the if we look at the allow editor controls, let's go ahead and look at that. So I show you the beginning. So the other thing that I'm doing here, if the if this is set to false, I'm not going to allow you to to basically use the import from the key from the keyboard. So what I'm saying here is I'm saying okay, if you're if you're holding the K the K letter by using your keyboard and this is the left controller, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the line. As soon as you release the the K key. I'm going to create a new line render, and that's going to allow me to basically mimic what I'm doing on the on the real controller, which is which is right here, and and that actually works really well. I can do that with the K letter, and I can do that with L. So K is going to be for the left controller, and then the L letter is going to be for the right controller. And I actually ended up renaming some of these. I think this is going to be, so this is going to be the left control. Let's go ahead and rename left controller. And then this one is gonna be the right. I had another variable that was called left key and right key. I ended up removing it because I don't I don't really need it anymore. This actually makes a lot more sense. So none of the code changed other than you know capturing the input this way. And then the other thing that I also did is I show you right above it that I'm using the transform from the editor component, and that allows me to override this, and then that way the code doesn't change. All it all that I really had to change was the input capture and then also overriding here if this is not null that means that the user is using it and then they also allow editor controls then i'm going to use that object otherwise i use whatever we have as default which is going to be the left controller anchor or the right controller anchor so now what i can do if i basically hold the key i could hold k or l so if i if i hold k and i move around you're going to see that i'm going to start to get the line render and that's how i can test it now by just holding by holding that key, I can do the same thing with the L key, which is going to be happening on the on the other controller, and that you know that actually works. the The other keys that I also enable, so one that I wanted to test with, was to be able to bring in the options. 
So you can do that with the by holding the Z, and I believe that one is for the left controller option. And then for the right controller options, it's gonna be X. And I'm gonna be putting that in the readme so you guys know how those works. And then if one is open, I can basically you know hold my down key, go up, and then that's how I'm changing the color that is selected. I can now use R, or I believe is, let me go ahead and check it out. If I go into my VR controller options, I can look at some of the settings in here that I have. So I'm using R to do selection on the right controller, and I'm using L to do selection on the left controller. So if I do L here, now I know that the basically the red color is selected. And I haven't tested these. I don't know if this is going to work, to be honest. But we can see if it's going to work by holding or key. It looks like it's working. So, so that's going to allow you to, you know, to change the to change the line. So if I go back, let me go ahead and go back here, and then let's select maybe a green color, and then I can just press the L key, and then now I can move around and make sure that you are hiding this because I'm not going to allow you to move unless you're hiding that panel because that's what's going to happen in the in the actual experience. And you can see how I'm now I'm now drawing. So. That's how that part is working. One thing that I, I also wanted to do, and I don't know if this is gonna work, is I want to be able to move this around and then hold a key, but I can't really do that because I am now constraining either the key, the, the actual key or L. So I had other properties that allow me to do that, but I don't know that you need to do that. I think for testing wise, what you really need to do is make sure that the you know the lines are, are changing, make sure that you can, you know, you can bring in the menu, you can test. You know, if you want to change the width, let's say that we change the width to something re really high, and then we were to hide it, we can go ahead and you know and do something huge, just like uh, just like I'm doing right now. So, so I think this is enough for testing and functionality. The the other thing that I want to show you is let me go ahead and hit play and then bring it back on because there are just too many things on the way. So the other thing that I want to show you is I'm also have a little debugging for here area that I am capturing when you press a K or or L. I'm basically using the debug info here to display, okay, what, what keys are getting captured. And that is helpful so that you're creating your lines and you can bind that to other things as well. And I'm also capturing the networking info. I'm gonna do this in the next video, the networking piece so you guys know how to run it and how the code works. So the next thing that I wanna show you is this area right here, how it's bound. So if we go down to the VR stats, so this is an object that I'm using as a singleton. It has a first label, second label, third label, fourth label. And I believe I'm going to change this because this is very, you know, you're constrained to four labels and it shouldn't be constrained to four labels. It should be more, it should be more robust. And I have other ideas of what to do for debugging. But for now, this is how it's done. And then the way that it gets called, if we go back into VS Code and we go into the VR, VR draw, you can see that I'm using VR stats, instance, second text. And these are all public, so that's why I can access them that way. I don't, so I don't really like it that I did it that way, but that's how it is done right now. It might change it later on. So make sure that you check that out. You can also go into that class and see how it is set up. It's very basic. It's just a bunch of, you know, options that I have, serializable text. And then I'm just calling the text property to, to set these values so that I can debug it. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.